Hey, welcome to Crypto Corner. This is Andy and Nicole. Uh, today, uh, I, I would, thought I'd expand upon uh, smart contracts and we'll, we'll go over some smart contracts uh, this week with coins that I recommend that I just absolutely love um, that are either in the DeFi or, or space um, that apps, I just absolutely love some of these uh, being in finance my entire life. Uh, I see what's going on and it's all about yield. Uh, you got this big institutional money that is uh, coming in at record pace. Um, why? It's because of, of yield. Uh, but we'll get into that in another video here later this week. Today, I'm going to talk about the downside or the evil side, if you will, of smart contracts. On the last video, we learned that smart contracts are really um, rules written on top of a, of, a, of a protocol that allows certain things to happen. So take that same uh, technology that Ethereum or smart contract coins uh, offer. Um, think of it like this. I don't think the most dominant coin has even been created yet. I don't think the coin that will... Uh, and it won't be for, for a good reason. It'll be a government. More than likely, uh, I can foresee the United States coming out with its own, own coin, call it whatever you want, uh, the Fed coin, uh, if you will, uh, or call it the elite coin, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I do see it coming um, simply because it'll save them billions and billions of dollars um, in central banking. But a bigger concern is the value uh, that they see in it is total control of people, hence control of money. They've been doing it with cash as best they can, um, but that's why you're starting to see all these, uh, uh, you're starting to see movements and um, verbiage come out that, you know, war on cash. Well, the reason they don't like cash is because they can't tax it, because many people work under the table and pay no tax on their income whatsoever. Um, you can apply that to uh, the populace across the board. It's not just, you know, quote unquote, the illegal immigrants that come in and work under the table. There's all kinds of people that work under the table. You know, it could be a drug dealer, a, a lady of the night. It could be, a, you know, labor. It could be, it could be anything. Cash is unaccountable and they don't like it. Um, I've always stood for a, uh, and, and they can't tax it. Let's just be honest. They don't like it because they can't control it and they can't tax it. And in the coffers of some some South American um, places, I'm sure there's billions, if not trillions of dollars of cash just sitting in warehouses, drug money or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but cash has always been that little thorn in the side. They love controlling money, but they don't love it when, you know, 20, you know, there, there's a, a black market of probably 20 percent that goes flies under the radar um, that dealings happen in cash. So you're going to see an ever increasing um, withdrawal from cash. It will slowly evaporate uh, or maybe they'll accelerate it through cryptocurrency and demand cash back because here's how it's going to play out. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty, um, I've, I've read a lot about this and I think of the United States, uh, you know, we went to war with four different countries, not for weapons of mass destruction. We went to war with four countries because they didn't recognize the U.S. dollar as the de facto uh, standard or, the, you know, uh, the world currency, the U.S. dollar. Um, so I find it ironic that 92% of the world's moved, uh, the world's money is moved on a daily basis. It's about $4.3 trillion dollars that goes to what we call the SWIFT system. And that's the accounting system, if you will, or the mechanism that moves money around the world. Well, 92% is pretty dominant, meaning everything is paired to the US dollar. Just like in cryptocurrency, everything is paired to Bitcoin. So draw that analogy, if you will. But governments around the world are, are don't like cash because they can't tax it, they can't control it um, to the extent that they want to. With cryptocurrency and smart contracts, that opens up the bad side of, of smart contracts in such a way that it is a definite way to control the money. 
Um, there'll be no offshore accounts. They'll, it solves taxation. It solves a lot of different problems that the government thinks we have. Um, so smart contract, and to give you a scenario, a story of how a smart contract would work with the Fed coin or the new government coin, first of all, I think they will take fiat currency or cash and have a, a sale that says for every two US dollars, you get one Fed coin. Somebody's got to pay for all this, this, uh, this debt and all this uh, printing of money that they're doing. Well, one of the ways that they can do that is write down the value or make the exchange rate 1.25 or 2% or whatever it might be. And to make it easy, it's going to take $2, two US dollars, or if you're in Europe, two euros or two yuan or whatever, to one cryptocurrency. And I think each government's going to do it. And so they're going to take this value, and I don't know what it will be. I'm sure it won't be in our favor. But how a smart contract would work there is understand they're the most powerful entity in the in the world. We go to war with countries. The I talked about the, the 92% that use the U.S. dollar and recognize it as the de facto currency. Well, there's 8% of the population that doesn't. And those just happen to be the four people we went to war with over the last two decades. Why? Money. Big surprise, eh? That's, you know, that's why Bitcoin was created in the first place. It was really in 2009, we had just come out of the most horrific uh, stock market manipulation and crash uh, of our life. And that was September 2008. That's when I got out of Wall Street and all financials and I was done. And I got into Bitcoin, well, a couple of years later after that, because it's sound money. It's we, the people. It's our money. We own, maintain, and control it. But what's coming on the horizon are, I can see where smart contacts are going to be used against us. They're going to be used to track us, track our spending, and disallow, let me repeat that, deny certain purchases of products. Let's say you're a bit overweight like me. Maybe I can't use my new federal cryptocurrency, the Fed coin, to buy a Twinkies down at 7-Eleven. Maybe I'm not allowed to biggie size it at Wendy's or is that McDonald's? I don't know, whatever. I'm not allowed to biggie size it because I don't fit within government girth regulations, meaning my height isn't proportionate with my weight. In essence, they're calling me fat. They're going to limit my ability to use my money where I want to. So it's going to have some limitations. So think about if you're overweight, maybe you can't buy candy. Maybe you're um, th there's lots of different scenarios. Maybe you are not allowed to buy a gun. Maybe you're not allowed to buy an ammo. Maybe you're not allowed to. That's the point. The list can go on and on and on and on. And how will they do it? Well, they've got the built-in infrastructure. Think of it this way. They've always controlled money, and they hate it when you have money abroad. Uh, I remember back a couple of years ago, something uh, the laws passed called NAFTA. And it was the North American Free Trade Agreement, I think is what they called it, some nonsense. But in essence, it did this. The U.S. government sent memos out to the banking world. And every country got one and every bank got one that said, if you hold U.S. assets abroad, you need to declare them and tell us, or we're going to fine you 37% any capital investment you have based on a U.S. dollar or a U.S. corporation. So in essence, they blackmailed them to divulging personal financial information of U.S. citizens. Remember, he who controls the money controls the people, and that's exactly what they're going to do. This technology is the most beautiful thing that's ever happened for us, we the people. But there's going to come a point in time when you're going to have to make a decision on what direction you're going to want to go to, because there's going to be the government's money, as usual. But there's also going to be we the people's money. So know what's coming, your pensions, your Social Security, your Medicaid, your Medicaid, your unemployment, your stimulus checks, your tax returns, your, your um, Wall Street investments are all going to be Bitcoin. They know what you have, when you bought it, why. It's all about control. They want to control the money. They want to control you. It saves them endless hours of trying to track down and, 
and reconcile, you know, debits and credits and where did this money come from? Because they'll have it. It'll all be right there in the ledger. And I'm sure it'll be done on a smart contract. And I'm sure so certain people are going to have certain rules of what you can and can't do with your own money. So it can be very dangerous. It's a very scary thing. Just know that that point in time is coming. Every day it gets a little closer. Matter of fact, I just saw uh, Miss Yellen, Miss Janet Yellen, what, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago. They're now experimenting with five different platforms slash coins slash protocols. Because in her own words, she says, we want to make sure we do it right. And that scares the living hell out of me because what that means, them doing it right, is meaning my rights, my liberties, my privacy are all going to be. And for many of you, you're not going to you're not going to have a choice. They're going to force you if you want your paycheck, health care, social uh, programs that you might be in that you qualify for. It's all going to be on blockchain. And they're going to have their own coin. Why? Because it's too profitable. And don't think of profitable in the way of, of a linearly as value, because I think it'll be a stable coin, but it'll have smart contract implications where they'll know everything about you when you use that ecosystem. So know it's coming, know it's dangerous, and know that if you're not properly diversified, you're going to be stuck in the middle and you're probably going to lose some net worth when that transaction happens from cash or fiat currency into the new digital form of whatever they call it, Fed coin or whatever, government coin or whatever. Or I'm sure they'll have some fancy little slogan to it, um, just like they do with stimulus checks. They, you know, the CARE Act or the, the you know, the funding stimulus financial pack. It's all nonsense. Uh, we have no fiscal responsibility, and that's what got us in the problem that we're in now, debt. And it's been mismanaged and just manipulated from fiat currencies to stocks, bonds, and anything related to the U.S. dollar, in my opinion, is tainted. Because right now, everything's in a bubble. When, you, when the world prints $25 trillion, you're going to have bubbles in every asset class in the world. So be cautious, because a lot of this money that's coming into cryptocurrency that's fueling this, what we call alt season, think of it this way. I know people love it when they see the, when they think linearly, they see all this big institutional money coming in. But where did that institutional money come from? Their buddies at Wall, or their buddies, central banks, their buddies in government. And you're seeing the payback right now every day. This stimulus package is full of so much pork of paying back the people that supported the current administration. And a lot of those people on Wall Street, what do they do? They take that money and they pump it right into Bitcoin. Now, the people that already own Bitcoin, what are they doing? They're diversifying through the altcoins. And that's why you're seeing the dominance of altcoins, because people are looking for that, that next coin, that next Berkshire Hathaway penny stock, but they want to do it in a cryptocurrency. And the opportunities are there, you know, what you're looking for. But this video was more about... <sighs> You know, the scary or the, uh, what's the best way? The evil side of smart contracts can be used against you. So I just want you to have that working knowledge that all of what you see that's going to come in, in the future, make sure you know what you're doing, understand what you're doing, and then some of you will be absolutely forced. You won't, you won't have a choice to make a decision um, because they've got the natural built infrastructure that when it happens, it will automatically have monetary velocity, utility, usage, because they're going to force everybody into it. So, but I do believe it'll be a stable coin. I don't think, uh, uh, or at least government will be a stable coin. Now, Fortune 500 companies and, and those types, I, I think those can be other, uh, other than, than stable coins. But know that there's a, Oh, there's a dark side of the stuff. And I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of truly what it is, what's going on. Um, Cause it's, to me, it's quite scary. Um, I'm just, I just feel blessed that for now, we, the people have our own currency and Bitcoin is proof 
that a currency or a money can survive autonomously without central control. That's what you, that's the, that's the principle we need to learn here. We don't need central banks. We don't need governments. And if you're going to tax us, tax us on consumption, not on income, you're penalizing me for being successful. You should tax people on their consumption, not on what they generate. It's backwards. So it really gets me irritated. That's what I love about Bitcoin. It's non-inflationary. It's a store of value. And brother, if you don't have some, get some today. Follow, uh, follow closely by Ethereum. I mean, one, two, you can throw in, you can look at the top. Uh, well, I'll do a video on it. We'll look at the top DeFi coins. We'll look at the top uh, decentralized type coins, smart contract coins. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I, I, I bought and why I bought them. And some we've had for a couple of months, some we've had for a couple of years. But we will share that with you. So we'll have a good week. It looks like dominance is, uh, Bitcoin is still down. It looks like money's still flowing in. Uh, and then I'll show you the, the websites where I go and do some of my research, um, some of the tools that I use to pick a coin. So with that said, um, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, hit the subscribe button. She always tells me, hey, have them hit the subscribe button. So we're going to do that. And uh, I think Nicole's up next with the video here. So have a great day. We'll talk soon.